The Minnesota Vikings, as of yesterday, have released Riley Reef, veteran left tackle who has played five seasons with the team, former first overall or first um, round draft pick by the Detroit Lions, played four seasons with them, and the last five with the Minnesota Vikings, and was a huge part for the Vikings' success for a majority of these seasons. Now, he has had some down years. 2019 was not a very successful year for Riley Reef, but 2020 was probably his best year for the Minnesota Vikings. Now, you take a look at this. This hit me by a surprise. Why did the Vikings really cut Riley Reef? Now, yes, it's good for our cap space. I understand that. It's very good for our cap space. But you look at what held the Vikings back last season. It was the offensive line. Now, there's other factors that had to come into the Vikings not having any success. A lot of that is pointed at the defense and special teams, not so much the offense. But the offensive line especially was a big part on what set the Minnesota Vikings back last year and why they ended with a losing record. So cutting Riley Reef, it just adds another question on this Vikings offensive line. Now, going into this offseason, we knew we needed a new starting left guard and a new starting right guard. Now, we have three openings on this Vikings offensive line. Now, we know Ezra Cleveland is going to start in the 2021 season somewhere on this Vikings offensive line simply because he was a second-round draft pick. But even that, we have two other spots on this Vikings offensive line that is an opening right now. So, we're going to take a look at what really led the Vikings to actually cut Riley Reef, who had a successful season. Now, let's take a look at his comparison, who... Right now, Minnesota Vikings cutting Riley Reef. Ezra Cleveland is expected to be our new starting left tackle. Now, the Minnesota Vikings drafted Ezra Cleveland in the second round of the 2020 draft out of Boise State as a left tackle to be a starting left tackle. He was expected to be Riley Reef's replacement. Now, I expected the Vikings to actually have cut Riley Reef one year ago today where he was coming off of a bad season. Now, he played this last season where he had a, a an excellent season, a tremendous season. And honestly, Ezra Cleveland disappointed this last year. Now, yes, he was a rookie, and you don't expect a whole lot of from rookie offensive linemen as they are in their rookie season. So per Courtney Cronin, basically, Riley Reef was ex was supposed to get a contract extension for the team. Now, Riley Reef was under contract for one more year with the team, and I said on this podcast before, Minnesota Vikings should not give a contract extension to Riley Reef, as right now he is a transitional guy, a transitional guy maybe into Ezra Cleveland or someone else. Instead, the Minnesota Vikings had cut him. Now, basically what Courtney Cronin is saying here is that the Minnesota Vikings could not get a contract extension where Riley Reef put, tr probably putting him on a team-friendly deal, they were unable to work that extension, and for that reason, they cut Riley Reef. Now, Riley Reef was expected to get a contract extension, which I can see why a lot of people do want him to have a contract extension, especially coming off of a grade of a season as he had, where he played 1,003 snaps starting 15 games, only allowing one sack in the 2020 season, and had a 71.4 PFF grade. He had the best season on this Vikings offensive line than anybody else. Is he the best player on our Vikings offensive line? No, that would be Brian O'Neill. So right now, Ezra Cleveland and Brian O'Neill are the two people who people are talking about, about being our starting left tackle in this 2021 season. Now, it should not be Brian O'Neill. I'll say that right now with Brian, with Brian O'Neill having a lot of injury concerns, he's very injury prone. I wouldn't expect him to actually be our starting left tackle. That wouldn't make sense, especially when you have a player like Ezra Cleveland, who you drafted to be your starting left tackle. Now, even if Ezra Cleveland does start this season, I won't have very high hopes on this Ezra Cleveland. Of course, it is his second year, so you have to cut him some slack. But Ezra Cleveland did play 622 snaps in the 2020 season, where he was starting at right guard for a majority of the season, nine games to be exact, and allowed five sacks with a 66.2 PFF grade. Like I said, he was a starter. I mean, he was a rookie starter, so you don't expect a whole lot coming out of a, a rookie, obviously, especially when you have other players who are playing guard. I mean, our best guard last year was Brett Jones, to be honest, and even Brett Jones didn't have a successful season. We were lacking all year at guard, and this was a huge this was a huge part on why the Minnesota Vikings fell short of the 2020 season, like I said earlier. There was no reason why the Vikings should have actually have moved Ezra Cleveland to left tackle starting out the 2020 season. Now going into this 2021 season, they're expecting they have high hopes for Ezra Cleveland. I can't say I'm on board with that. But once again, they're they're saying either Brian O'Neill or Ezra Cleveland right now. Now it's going to be Ezra Cleveland. Brian O'Neill has been a starting right tackle since they drafted him. I think he started, uh, I think he did start as a rookie day one. They started uh, Brian O'Neill at right tackle. I'm pretty sure I might need to fact check that, but he's been at right tackle ever since. Of course, he's been injured and had Rashad Hill stepping in and Rashad Hill is another unrestricted free agent that the Minnesota Vikings must bring back. Both Rashad Hill and Brett Jones are unrestricted free agents that must return with the team. Possibly Brett Jones might be a starter at right guard for this 20 21 season now you take a look at what how this will really affect the Vikings season now let's let's take a look at this cap space so 
cutting Riley Reef, who is 32 years old. Now he is a veteran and he was not the future for the team. We knew this going into this 2021 season. We expected Riley Reef to only be with the team for one more year. At least that's what we've been talking about because I didn't expect the Vikings to actually bring Riley Reef back after this 2021 season where he was only under contract for one more year. I would expect the Vikings to have transitioned into Ezra Cleveland by the end of the season. Now the Vikings have high hopes for Ezra Cleveland where they cut Riley Reef, saving them $11.75 million in cap space. Still is worth three point two in dead cap and are just cap space is now at 8.73 so after cutting riley reef after cutting kyle rudolph after cutting dame bailey this opens up a possibility for a new a new free agent signing for the minnesota vikings and we all know it's going to be on the offensive line right now we don't know at all what our vikings offensive line is going to look like for this 2021 season all we know is garrett bradbury is going to be our starting center and that's all we know that's exact. That's all we know for this Vikings offensive line right now. Now, Garrett Bradbury, even he, his job is up for debate. Now, he's going into his third year, and like I've said previously on this podcast, that third year for the Vikings offensive, or for any offensive lineman, is the biggest one because that's where they hit their peak. That's initially where they look their best is third-year players, um, third-year offensive linemen and th- third-year cornerbacks. This is where they hit their peak in the NFL, and hopefully we see this with Garrett Bradbury. Now, he has done a great job blocking for Dalvin Cook. Outside from that, he hasn't done a good job protecting Kirk Cousins from the interior side of the line. Now, it really has to do with his size. He is an undersized offensive lineman and hopefully he can work around that hopefully we can see some better protection for Kirk Cousins and not as many holding fouls as we saw this last season if that does happen this, that will really help out the Vikings offensive line especially with the questions we have at the guard position right now and at the left tackle position we don't know who's going to be our starting left tackle or right tackle or either one of our guards we don't know anything yet but we all we do know is that the Minnesota Vikings are looking to a free agent offensive lineman at this moment They opened up all this cap space to get that big signing. And this is a good free agent market, and it just got better. We take a look at some potential additions for the team. Obviously, Joe Thune, 28-year-old left guard for the New England Patriots, is expected to hit the free agent market at the Patriots are not going to use their franchise tag on Joe Thune. He will hit the free agent market where the Vikings can sign him. This would be the biggest signing for the Minnesota Vikings and hopefully this is what they're looking at doing. Obviously, left guard is what held us back last year. Dakota Dozier was arguably the worst starter on our Vikings offensive line and they started him all 16 games I take that back actually Drew Samia was our worst starter but Dakota Dozier starting all 16 games is the most memorable player to have played such a bad season and Dakota Dozier will not be back for that reason we don't know who's going to be our starting left guard but we want it to be someone 10 times or more better than Dakota Dozier and that would be Joe Thune now Joe Thune if the Vikings do sign him they would have to sign him on possibly a three-year 40 million dollar deal this would held the this would put the Vikings against the cap of roughly around eight million dollars somewhere against the cap so obviously if the Vikings do sign Joe Thune this means Eric Wilson will not be back Anthony Harris will not be back they might need to restructure Harrison Smith or Anthony Barr's contract as well but it will be worth it it will 100% be worth it because Joe Thune coming in could be the difference maker for this Vikings offensive line now even bringing in Joe Thune you have question marks who's going to be starting at left tackle you don't know who's going to be starting at right guard for that reason there is also Gabe Jackson 30 year old right guard for, who was released by the Las Vegas Raiders and can be signed for the Minnesota Vikings as well as Lane Taylor who is also going to be a free agent this 2021 offseason these are two players that you can start at right guard or left guard I mean Gabe Jackson and Lane Taylor I'm pretty sure are both uh, welcome to start either at left guard or right guard both of them would likely be only on a one-year contract because they are both in their 30s but any of these guards right here Joe Thune Gabe Jackson Lane Taylor I would be fine with any of these guys coming into this Vikings offensive line and helping us out a lot outside of that we have left tackles now We haven't been focusing a lot on left tackles just because obviously I thought and a lot of Vikings fan thought Riley Reef was here for one more season and we didn't need to bring in a left tackle. We would hopefully after Riley Reef be transitioning into Ezra Cleveland. Now, right now, we don't know if Ezra Cleveland's ready based off of what we saw last year, him starting at right guard. Ezra Cleveland's not ready. Now, obviously, we haven't been there during practice and everything. We saw him only at right guard this 2020 season. Now, even when Riley Reef was out with COVID week 16, they put Rashad Hill as our left tackle instead of Ezra Cleveland, which is, comes by a surprise because Ezra Cleveland is supposed to be our left tackle. He's supposed to be our left tackle starting this season and beyond. 
And that's why they were supposed to transition into him. Now, I don't think Mike Zimmer or any of us are comfortable with Ezra Cleveland starting at center at this point because of what we saw last year, him starting at right guard, who he did an okay job for a rookie. But when it comes down to it, you do not want to have a question mark. You do not want to go into this 2021 season not knowing who's going to be your left tackle, if they're going to be good enough to be a left tackle. Because obviously you have a uh, quarterback like Kirk Cousins who is right-handed and does need the pocket uh, the pocket time, time inside the pocket. He can't rotate as much. So for that reason, you need a good left tackle and we thought Riley Reef was going to be back now we can look to other players as of 10 minutes ago 10 minutes ago the Kansas City Chiefs have released Eric Fisher which again that comes by a huge surprise because when you look at the Super Bowl this this last Super Bowl where the where the Chiefs were blown out the water by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers often people will ask themselves well why did the Chiefs do bad and it it's not very talked about why their defense held him back or anything it's talked about that Patrick Mahomes didn't have time inside the pocket so why do you think that was people often say Eric Fisher was injured during the Super Bowl so they had to start Zimmers at left tackle this is what a lot of people have been saying so Eric Fisher was a huge part in the Kansas City Chiefs success since the 2013 season since they drafted him first uh first overall he's been a huge part in their success and them cutting Eric Fisher came by a huge surprise now he is 30 years old so he is a veteran and he's developing I mean I mean he's probably on the decline now that he's going into his 30s typically you see this with offensive linemen so the Vikings can honestly bring in Eric Fisher on a one-year deal he's a stud left tackle he may be the best left tackle in the NFL in fact the two best left tackles are both going to be free agents this 2020 21 season that is both Eric Fisher and Trent Williams Trent Williams now he's 33 years old and he's been injured for a lot of his career so I don't know if bringing in Trent Williams would be a safe signing you're gonna have to pay him a lot of money on a one-year deal probably fully guaranteed as well because of how great of a season he had this last year but once again he gets injured a lot I don't know if signing Trent Williams would be a smart decision but bringing in Eric Fisher would be a great decision because you saw in the 2020 um or in the 2021 Super Bowl this last year where they lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you saw how important that left tackle position was and how much Eric Fisher actually meant for the team. Now, Eric Fisher was injured that game. Patrick Mahomes was running all around the field the entire game. So signing Eric Fisher, I mean, releasing Eric Fisher, now I understand this opens up a lot of cap space for the team. They're likely going to use this cap space. They have their eyes on defensive players, uh, wide receivers, maybe even bringing back Sammy Watkins, who is another player who is expected to hit the free agent market. Now, Sammy Watkins hasn't meant a whole lot for their team. Obviously, their two best receivers are Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. So Sammy Watkins hasn't done a whole lot for the team. And then they also have Mecole Hardman. They have, a bo- they have a bunch of wide receivers right now. And bringing back Sammy Watkins is... Probably not the best decision for the Chiefs, but once again, they know what they're going to do with their money, and they sign, they releasing Eric Fisher was came by a surprise because of how much he's actually meant for their team, and now they're going to move that money likely somewhere else, and maybe Eric Fisher can come with the Minnesota Vikings and start at left tackle for one season. I would be all down for that. If Eric Fisher did start here, we would likely not have Joe Thune coming in, and that be kind of, I I like I said on this podcast, I really want to see Joe Thune play in this. So let's take a look at how I want this starting offensive line to look for the Minnesota Vikings. I would like to see Ezra Cleveland start at left tackle. Now, I don't want to go into this 2020 season or this 2021 season not knowing if Ezra Cleveland is ready. I only want Ezra Cleveland to start at left tackle if we know that he's ready. Or else blow your money on a, a different left tackle. Sign Trent Williams, sign Eric Fisher, sign someone else on a one-year deal because I don't want there to be a question mark at the left tackle position. If Ezra Cleveland looks ready, if the Vikings see him in training camp and say, okay, this guy's ready, start him at left tackle. Where will the Vikings' money go to? Well, Joe Thune. I would like to see the Vikings sign Joe Thune on a uh, three-year, $40 million contract worth a lot of uh, incentives. When I say $40 million, I'm talking about bonuses. I'm talking about... um, uh, uh, obviously base salary, contract bonus, that kind of stuff, or signing bonus, um, and then add incentives in there too. So I would like to see Joe Thune come on a big contract. He would obviously be our most paid offensive lineman right now. As the rest of these guys are all on their rookie contracts right now, he'd be by far the most overpaid, or the most paid uh, offensive lineman on our offensive line. And then Garrett Bradbury at center, no question about that. Right guard, though, is another question because Should the Vikings draft a guard in the first round? Now, I have said multiple times I do not want to see the Vikings draft a guard in the first round because, or an offensive lineman in the first round, period, because we've seen how this has worked out for the Minnesota Vikings so far. Drafting offensive linemen in the first round often does not work with the Minnesota Vikings. I would rather take an already developed player in free agency like Joe Thune. I would take an already developed player in free agency instead. 
So who's going to start at right guard? And this is, again, like last year, we don't, we have no idea how our right guard position is going to look. Last year, we saw a lot of players start at right guard. We saw Pat Elfline, Drew Samia, Ezra Cleveland, Brett Jones. The best of them was Brett Jones. And for that reason, he's the most likely going to start this 2021 season with the Minnesota Vikings at right guard. Obviously, Vikings would have to bring him back on another contract as he is an unrestricted free agent. And I really hope the Vikings can use this money for an offensive lineman. I really hope they can use it for a good offensive lineman. It is no question that the Vikings are looking to offensive line right now. After cutting all of these guys, they are looking to offensive line. Hopefully, it's going to be Joe Thune. Hopefully, we can maybe bring in two guys, Joe Thune. And honestly, if the Vikings can actually draft Rashawn Slater at the 14th overall pick, I'd be fine with that. Because as much as I've said, I do not want the Vikings to draft off offensive line. If you can get Rashawn Slater at the 14th overall pick and start him as at left tackle, or even right guard starting him anywhere in the offensive line, I'd be totally fine with that because this is how much the Vikings need to invest in their offensive line. You're paying a quarterback this much money who likes, who needs that pocket time, does not rotate outside the pocket very often. You need to buy him the most time you can, especially in a division where you're going against Khalil Mack, you're going against the Smith brothers, and then also you have the Detroit Lions who are also adding a lot of pass rushers. So you're going against these teams. You need the most time you can get for Kirk Cousins. And if you can get two new starters on this Vikings offensive line, both uh, in free agency and in the draft. Now, I'm not a huge fan of drafting players 14th or, or drafting offensive linemen in the first round for the Minnesota Vikings. But if you can draft Rashawn Slater at the 14th overall pick, I would be fine with that. That's the only acceptable decision I have right now. There's also Elijah Vera Tucker, who could also be available there. But even him, I just rather go defense at that point because I, he's not as ready as Rashawn Slater would be. Rashawn Slater doesn't need as much development for the NFL, while Elijah Vera Tucker needs to go to the right system to actually work, if that makes any sense. And the Vikings is not the right system for him. So bringing in Rashawn Slater, I'd be totally fine with that. And this is how I think the Vikings offensive line will look this 2021 season. I do expect Ezra Cleveland to actually start at left tackle because he was drafted to be a starting left tackle somewhere in the future. And that future is now. Let me know what y'all think.